So uh, we took the perspective that GDPR is a, uh, an opportunity for analytic maturity as much as it is a compliance issue. So with that, the, the role of the, the data protection officer needs to be a full understanding of, of what the possibilities are with data. Right? So as companies transition from using data just for insight into moving uh, to build data as analytic products, they have to be thinking, all right, what's, um, what am I doing with data? Why am I, um, why am I collecting? Uh, what's the best possible outcome? And be cognizant at the same time of uh, all of the roles and res the responsibilities of being GDPR compliant. So one, w the reason it's so impactful is that we've moved from a situation where we've collected data passively for with, without reason uh, to now a situation where we have to explain why we're collecting data uh, passively or using it, pass uh, using it uh, on passive data. Uh, that is a big transition from the data hoarding, which has gone on with the data lake creation and uh, the proliferation of uh, Hadoop-related environments. So we are we're much more um, focused now on on, on collecting data for purpose. IQ has a, has a number of uh, technological um, advantages in a world of GDPR. Of course, first and foremost, it's a, uh, it's a, a, a centralization of data, uh, and not only a centralization of data, but a centralization of data science. So data science is often done in R and Python and other scripts, and so we put that all in one place and give transparency into the process. Right? We also allow for a lot of metadata to be captured about the process and so at each and every step in data transformation or machine learning or even using a predictive model, there are opportunities for documentation and a lot of what we've seen, we've seen this morning is that documentation is very important to be, it may be the most important thing. It's not necessarily to create consent or, or, or anything else, it's to actually have documented what you use data for at a given time. Hiring a data protection officer um, was was a, was a sort of an easy checkbox, and perhaps the, the the way that at least an informal poll of the room suggested that almost every company that had hired one hired them internal from internal sources, and I would actually uh, think that that maybe looking to a consultant, a third party consultant, might be a a, a better first step in the in the DPO. Um, like the path to, to, to creating a, d a data protection officer or office. Uh, why is that? Finding, finding one person that uh, simultaneously sees the, the downside risk but also the, the upside is, is very difficult and so borrowing from um, uh, someone who serves multiple industries or at least multiple companies within an industry would, would bring the kind of experience that I think would show both the positive and the negative of data. It's fantastic to see this here in the Netherlands. Um, we, we've had these uh, types of incubator data science programs pop up within in the U.S. This is an absolutely gorgeous facility, easily the most beautiful one that I've been in, uh, and uh, a vibrant atmosphere with different kinds of industries all coming together to think about the uses of data, uh, in this case the, the, the positive and negatives of collecting data, um, but uh, a, a great collection of very smart people.